Dave and this is Logan out once again for a walk in the New Forest. Thanks for joining us. Today we're at a place called Janesmore Pond. It's just to the southeast of the village of Fritham, about halfway between the A31 in the south and the B3078 in the north. And today we're going to be doing a roughly four and a half mile circular route that's going to have quite a bit of woodland. Uh, we're going to come across what is perhaps the oldest golf course in Hampshire and hopefully a few surprises along the way. It's a beautiful sunny summer's morning. It's already about 22 degrees. It's going to be quite a warm day. So we've got plenty of water. Logan's got his little water bowl. And this tree stump that we're on is crawling with ants. So we're going to kick on. <laughs> Do join us. Well, I've parked my car at the James Moore Pond Forestry Commission car park. And before I start the walk properly, I made a little detour to the northwest, just on the outskirts of the uh, village of Fritham, to show you this trough. <laughs> now, you might uh, wonder what this very impressive livestock trough is doing stuck out in the middle of nowhere. Well, during the Second World War, the whole area to the south of me, and I'll just pan round to show you over there, was um, set aside for uh, an RAF uh, airfield, all called RAF Stony Cross. Now, uh, I have done a, a little video uh, about that, so I'll put the link in towards the end. But basically, the whole airfield site, including Janesmore Pond, was encircled by fencing. So the ponies and livestock didn't have anywhere to drink. So the RAF kindly built this special trough outside the perimeter fencing just for the livestock, and it's still here today. Well, I'm just on my way back from the trough to the pond. And very close by, there's a fairly well-preserved Bronze Age um, barrow. Um, insofar as the surrounding ditch is certainly um, easy to identify. Now, what's interesting about this barrow um, is that it may have been used um, as a battle command HQ for the airfield during the war. Um, it was quite common for these um, airfields to have basically these bunkers um, called Battle Command HQs. Uh, there was always a concern that the, perhaps the Germans might uh, drop paratroopers or take over the airfield. And if that happened, uh, an officer would come to the bunker which was located just away from the airfield and they'd be able to oversee the defence from there. But um, whereas RAF Ibsley and the one up to RAF Holmesley, it's obvious where that is. People aren't 100% sure one was ever built here. Having said that, if we just have a little investigation, um, which way are we going to go? Let's go up this little path here. I did notice that there is some sort of concrete structure at the very top now where, yes, there it is down there. So there's certainly something that looks World War II-ish at the top. Well, they're pretty outrageous that they decided to build it into what is effectively a, an ancient monument. And then uh, just turning round to the west, I noticed there are one, two, three, four concrete blocks. I don't know what those are, possibly to hold fencing up. I don't know. Well, as you can see, I'm now right by Janesmore Pond itself and as you can see the water level is quite low. I am filming in the middle of August so you'd expect it to be a little bit dried out. Now it doesn't actually appear on an 1885 map but it does on a 1913 map so I'm guessing that it is man-made. It used to be a pond specifically for kids to fish in but I see there's a, a no fishing sign and uh, I can't see any evidence of uh, fish. It's a very popular location for, for tourists to come and uh, no doubt kids will paddle in it. 
Well, I've left uh, the pond and now heading south. So on the right hand side, I've got this vast open area of heathland and that's where the old RAF Stony Cross used to be. It's long gone now. And then to my left, some woodland, which we're not quite going to go into yet. We're going to head to the Long Beach enclosure first. But as we wander along, there are still little bits of evidence of that old airfield site. Here's some, um, some brickwork that was clearly the foundations of some sort of uh, possibly a support building looking at uh, the location. And so we will see the odd artifacts such as that for the next half mile or so. Well, we've made our way to the entrance to the Long Beach campsite and now I'm going to start heading east and a fair bit of the campsite here still uses parts of the uh, the concrete remains of the uh, aircraft dispersals from the old airfield. In fact just here to my, or just in front of me, is where the old water tower used to be. That was the last um, structure to be demolished from the airfield back in 2004 I think it was. And this little roadway here again this is all part of the old airfield. It's quite an odd feeling this. Um, the Covid-19 restrictions have been relaxed a little bit and a lot of the campsites in the New Forest are now open but this particular site is closed. Well normally at the height of the summer it would be absolutely heaving with camper vans and tents but it's completely deserted. I've got the place to myself <laughs> but I almost feel I should be whispering. So what a place to camp. If I turn around just to show you, you know, it's full of beech trees and oak trees and lots of shade there. I say completely, it's like the Marie Celeste at the moment. Well, the sun really is out in all its glory now. It's uh, absolutely gorgeous. Right, now this is an important part of the walk if you're following this. I know a few people <laughs> do follow these walks. We've come through the campsite and there's a, uh, a cycle track which heads off down into King's Garn gutter enclosure. But we're not going to go there. There's a little cycle post here, number 29. Instead, uh, we're going to head straight on, sorry if the sun's directly in your eyes there, straight on uh, heading eastwards through uh, a gap in some trees. It's a, it is a well-defined path, you won't get lost, promise. <laughs> and basically as soon as we get to a, a stream that's when we'll start turning north. some tremendous trees around uh, this particular neck of the woods and uh, come across a magnificent oak tree here. I'd love to know how old that one is. Now in this part of the forest you tend just to get two main species of oak. You get the common oak or pedunculate and the sessile and the main difference between the two is well look at the acorns. On a common oak the acorns tend to be on single stalks whereas with the sessile which is what this tree is here the acorns tend to grow side by side and there I've hopefully you can see that two little baby acorns side by side but yeah that really is a stunner oh it really is lovely through here this little track that I'm following now circumnavigates the king's gutter enclosure which is on my left and uh well, that was um, established way back in the uh, the 1860s, largely as a result of the Deer Removal Act of 1851. It's about 120 hectares in total. 
So most of the original trees there have been replaced and a, a lot of Scots pine were introduced in the, the 1940s. Oh, look at you. <laughs> I nearly stood on you by mistake. Yeah, quite, quite a big chap, aren't you? Must be nearly a couple of inches long, I reckon. On a mission, that's for sure. We've now come across the Colmere gutter stream, so that means we've gone as far east as we're going to go. So now we're going to head north. Having said we've come across it, if I show you, it's completely dried up. Although, just panning around to the right here, oh, there is a little bit of water there. But you can see how um, uh, deep this stream can get by looking at the side of the banks later on in the winter this will be a gushing torrent and this actually goes out all the way to the well river Cadnam and then it joins the black water and uh, well, eventually it'll incredible to think it'll work its way out to sea at some stage well I think I've come to my favorite part of the the walk heading north and uh, I'll just show you there's a little open area so on the left hand side it's still the King's Garn gutter enclosure. On the right hand side is the Blackthorn Copse. And then just in front of me you've got this row of crab apples. It really is quite pretty. Well we've now made our way to the edge of the Bramshaw Golf Course. And I shall have to whisper while these gentlemen are concentrating hard on the green. It was established in 1865 when the owner built it in his own garden without permission. It's the oldest golf course in Hampshire, beating Lyndhurst by a few months. In 1880, Bramshaw Golf Club was actually formed, but by 1890 it only had nine holes, so it formed a partnership with Lyndhurst Golf Club, which also had nine holes. The combined club, called the New Forest Golf Club, had the unique feature of the front nine holes and the back nine holes being five miles apart. Now see how this chap gets on with his putt. Deep in concentration. Get in the hole. Oh, just a few inches short. The course here was extended to 18 holes in the early 20th century and the partnership dissolved in 1913 it wasn't actually until 1945 that the Forestry Commission formally gave the club a permit to allow golf to be played here. A second 18-hole course called the Manor was opened in 1971 and that was built behind the Bell Inn on the opposite side of the B3078. So this old course here is known as the Forest Course. Oh, close. Look pretty straight to me. <laughs> well, that, that was good fun, sitting down watching the various golfers go by. It's a sport that I've never really tried, so I know nothing about it. But I'm told the course is an interesting one, insofar as only one of the holes actually has bunkers. But there are quite a few streams as hazards, and of course, the odd pony or two. Well, the sun really is out in all its glory now. Fantastic. Well, we've been following a, a cycle track. and We're just about to go into the Salisbury Trench enclosure and we're going to do a little loop. It's going to be in some shade, I'm pleased to say. Um, it's a very old enclosure uh, established in the 1700s. 
mainly oak and beech and then some Scots pine was added in the, the 1930s. And just to my left, and I'll pan round an area that I'm not actually going to go into, but that's uh, Gibbet Wood there. I think it got its name from the fact that a local landowner, a chap called John Le White, or Wheat, was hanged or hung. I can never remember, is it hanged or hung? Anyway, anyway, he was, that's where he met his demise in the mid 1300s. There was no record of what his crime was. Well, uh, we're on our homeward leg now, heading back towards the pond on the edge of the coppice of Linwood enclosure. And we've come across another pony pound. We've certainly come across a fair few of these during our walks on the New Forest. And this is, I'd say, a middle-sized one. Again, as so many of them are very rustic in their, their nature, but an ideal location. You can see they uh, corral the ponies once a year normally in the, the pony drift down that funnel in front of me and then through into the pound here where the ponies can be looked at health-wise or picked out uh, for sales or whatever. Well, we nearly made our way back to our original starting point and another bit of the old World War II airfield here. This is a concrete gully or channel to direct uh, surface water off from the dispersal areas down onto the valley below. Come on, you're going to show us so we can, we can just about make our way up through it. Oh, pull your old dad up. Good boy. Well, folks, we've come to the end of our walk. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then please give us a thumbs up and like and to make a comment. And hopefully you'll be able to join us for another walk in the countryside sometime in the future. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. I said we've had a super walk today. Again, we've been blessed with some really terrific weather. We're having a little uh, drinks break and then just heading back to the car. So until we meet again, thanks for watching. And Shirio. Good boy. Is that good? You gonna have some more? Yes? Oh, I know what. Must be time for a bicky. Mm -hmm.